Let's take a look at this problem. It's problem 9-2a, and it deals with warranty expense and liability estimation. All right, now I'm reading this paragraph right in here. On October 29, 2007, Lobo Company began operations by purchasing razors for resale. Lobo used the perpetual inventory method. The razors have a 90-day warranty that re requires the company to replace any non-working razor. When a razor is returned, the company discards it and mails a new one from merchandise inventory to the customer. The company's cost per new razor is $20 and its retail selling price is $75 in both 2007 and 2008. The manufacturer has advised the company to expect warranty costs to equal 8% of dollar sales. And then we have the following transactions, and as we go through them down here to the left of my mouse, we will um, prepare journal entries to record these transactions and adjustments for 2007 and 2008. Okay, now I'm going to have to scroll a little bit, but I think that won't be much of a problem. Let's take a look at that first transaction, November 11, 2007. To the left of my mouse I'm reading, we sold 105 razors for $7,875. Okay, let's go ahead and adjust that. Now, since they didn't tell us it was made on, a, on account, we'll assume that we, re, we recorded that sales for cash. So we debit cash for $7,875 and we credit sales. Let me slide because I think we have some other entries we need to consider as well. Right? The cost of sales entry. So we debit cost of goods sold since they're using the perpetual inventory system and credit inventory for $2,100. And that takes care of our entry for the 11th. Now moving up here we recognized warranty expense related to November sales with an adjusting entry. Alright, so we've got to figure out how much that entry should be four. Okay, now I slid up just so we could read this again. They tell us expect warranty cost to be 8% of dollar sales. Okay, well we know we had $7,875. So if we slide over here, um, let me just slide this over. I think I can do this. Yeah. Now you can see it right here on the screen. What I did is I entered $7,875 and then now I took the value of the 7875 times 8% to come up with $630. So if we slide this back to where we were, we can then slide down. We can see that that $630 is what we need to recognize for November 30th. Okay. January 9th, let me slide a little bit up so we can see it. We replaced 15 razors that were returned under warranty. All right, now when we do that, they said the company's new razor is $20. Um, its retail price is $75. So with that information, let's take a look at what we do. Okay, they replaced 15 razors returned for warranty. All right. So 15 times $75 um, should be equal to that um, 300. Uh, let me calculate the, that. Calculate that the, the the right way here. Actually, I just said that incorrectly. It's 15 razors times the $20 cost per razor. So 15 times 20 gets us that $300, and that's where that. That's where we would come up with the dollar amount that we would then debit to estimated warranty liability, reducing it. Because we set up the accrual here, now we're reducing it based on the, the real warranty experience we're having. And of course, the replacement has to come out of inventory, so we credit merchandise inventory. All right, then on the 16th, we sold 220 ragers for $16,500. Again, we're going to have the exact same transactions that we saw earlier. Debit to cash, credit to sales, and then a debit to cost of goods sold for the cost portion, and a credit to inventory, again equal to the cost portion. Okay, next on the 29th here, we replaced 30 razors that were returned under the warranty. So 30 times 20 is $600. Let me slide here. 
and we'll uh, show you that um, we then again debit estimated warranties for the six hundred dollars thirty times our cost of twenty and the cost comes out of inventory okay and sliding up from the thirty first we need to rec recognize warranty expense related to December sales with an adjusting entry. Okay, now I've slid the screen over so you can see. I've dropped in the 16,500 of sales we got here, and the 8% is the amount of warranty expense we expect, so when we multiply those two, we get $1,320, and we debit estimated warranty liability, excuse me, we credit estimated warranty liability, and debit the warranty expense for that amount. Let's slide this back over and we'll tackle the next transaction in January. Okay, January 5th we sold 150 razors for 11,250. All right, I'm going to go quickly here because you, at this point we know the transactions. Debit to cash, credit to sales, and we record the cost of what we sold as a debit to cost of sales and a credit to merchandise inventory. All right, let me slide up. On the 17th, we replaced 50 razors that were returned under warranty. 50 times 20, expecting that number to be $1,000. Right? We've seen this before now. Debit to estimated warranty liability because we're reducing the obligation since now this involves known warranties and we take the offset is the cost coming out of inventory. And then of course on the 31st, we need to recognize warranty expense related to January sales. And again, we take the January sales, multiply it times the 8%. Okay, now I've slid that down so you can see the entry again, the debit to warranty expense and the credit for $900. And $900 is what you get when you take the sales of $11,250 times 8%. Okay, then on part two, they say how much warranty expense is reported for November and December. And how we would come up with these dollar amounts is we simply add up the debits to warranty expense. So for 2007, if we slide up, we see that we recorded $630. And then in December, we recorded 1320 which is the two amounts we got there. Let's keep on sliding and see if we can tackle the next one. How much warranty as expense is reported for January 2008? Okay, well that was the $900. Um, that we recorded uh, in our last entry, right? That you saw down there, the $900. Okay, then they've asked, what's the balance of estimated warranty liability as of December 2007? Now, to come up with this, you essentially have to build a T account. Now, I'm not going to do that in our demonstration, but we start off with the original credit to the liability account, right? And we would go through all the transactions. We would start off with a credit to the liability of 630, then it gets reduced by a $300 debit, then we have another debit of $600. Oh, but we also um, where's our warranty? We, we credit again the 630 at the end of the year for the next estimate. We credit it again here. So we go through all the debits and the credits, remembering that the normal balance for the estimated warranty liability is a credit. So credits will increase and um, debits will decrease. And once we do that, we're able to come up with the dollar amount, which should be 1050 Okay. And then requirement five says, what's the balance in the estimated warranty liability account as of December 2008? Well, if we take the 1,050 and then look at the transactions that we had in 2008, we'll be able to come up with that balance. And it comes out to $950. So if you, let's see, 1,050, then um, we debit 1,000, which gets us to 50, then we credit for 900, so that should get us to the 950 balance, which it does. And that takes care of this problem, everyone. Thank you.